How often have you taken a ferry and not really had time to explore the areas surrounding the port before your departure? This is certainly true for us, and so as we prepared for our sailing from Stranraer in Dumfries and Galloway to Belfast, we decided to take time to get to know this fabulous part of the world. Follow us in this video as we show you around Stranra and its neighbouring coastline. We reveal not only some unique stories, we profile four great places to call home and share a little insight into this much bypassed corner of Scotland in the hope that if you head this way, you'll feel inspired to stop just for a little while. This little slice of heaven allows you to walk, sleep, rest and generally just enjoy the beautiful area. This is the parking area just down the end towards the Steam Packet Inn. It is a little bit boggy sometimes during the wet weather and I'll give you fair warning, it's a little slopey, although with views like this, what more can you ask for? Although this little beauty does come with a little sad tale that on the 11th of January 2000, seven local fishermen, three of them from the same family, went up to Kukubri to collect their trawler over to the Isle of Man and in storms it sank and all the fishermen were lost. There's a memorial here and on the Isle of Man to pay homage to those brave, brave fishermen. Next up is one of the most unique places I think we've ever called home. We've headed towards Stranra, just 30 minutes up on the west coast of Loch Ryan. And this is called Scar Park Air. Tonight, this is where we call home. Welcome to Stranra in Dumfries and Galloway. We're at a unique site. It's a camper spot and it's an old RAF airfield and we're going to show you around a little bit with some really exclusive footage. This is an amazing spot, hope you like it too and as always there are the coordinates and the park for night reference. This is so unique. There we go, so information and a telephone number. Although well, you can look on search for sites, the information's all there. And uh, there you go, you've got a scan to pay, which we'll do for night two. We've already paid for one night uh, through uh, PayPal. And there you go, drinking water, toilet waste, happy days. This was essentially their runway, and this was used in World War I and World War II and then they would come up on land. The Scar Park Air has no runway. It was only the concrete pads and the driveways, if you will, with the circles where they could park and turn around sea and planes. come seaplanes. Yeah. They were all seaplanes. Ah, planes. okay. And then they would come out and take off from here. Ah. In both world wars, this was a 
used for that purpose. Oh, fantastic. So not, pro not proper planes, seaplanes. Seaplanes. Yeah, yeah. Seaplanes, yeah. And on top of all that fabulous history, the walks around the area are absolutely great. You've got to check out the four mile round trip, Ryan's Loop. And this is how close you are to the Ken Ryan Port, p and and Stena Lines, no more than about 30 minutes away. What an absolutely fantastic spot this has been. Absolutely loved it. And uh, I think we'll probably be back. Stranra, just across the water. We're gonna go and do a little bit of exploring around the peninsula a little bit. Although for tenor a night, we are so gonna be back. The third part of our explorations took us south on what is better known as the Rins of Galloway. This Hammerhead Peninsula is 25 miles from tip to toe and takes you to the lighthouse of the Mull of Galloway which is Scotland's most southerly point. These rural country lanes are a little on the narrow side, although even in August they're really very quiet. And the final approach down to the lighthouse is single track, although there are plenty of passing places. The Mull of Galloway is a haven for walkers, bird watchers and historians. The lighthouse, although not manned any longer, is actually now community owned and is well worth taking a trip up to the top of the tower. Galloway was actually built in the 19th century by Robert Louis Stevenson's grandfather, Robert. Every day's a school day. Rude not to go to the fog. a film set here in 2018 called The Vanishing starring Gerald Butler and Peter Mullen. Never knew that. The Mullen Galloway Lighthouse is 26 metres high and 99 metres above sea level and is the furthest south you can go in Scotland. 
Next stop, Isle of Man. So for three pounds, I've managed to secure myself a tour of the tower. And when you think you're at the top, you're a bit more to climb. And then even more. What's going on? How phenomenal is this? Tonight, this is home. Just there. We're at the lighthouse at the Mull of Galloway, which is the southernmost point of Scotland. I've even got myself a little certificate. It's exciting, isn't it? Where are we, babe? Well, it's called Port Logan. About 30 or 40 houses, nice little bay. Not, not far, far from, Yeah, not far from the lighthouse. Not far from the Mall of Galloway. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes away. Come to this lovely little parking space, you can actually park overnight here and we're just heading over there to something called the Fish Pond. Oh, Port Logan's a lovely little spot on the uh, Mull of Galloway. We're only about 45 minutes away from Stranra and it's got connections with uh, Thomas Telford. Oh, it's just got such a stunning beach, look at that, it's beautiful here. A couple of places you can park up overnight. The Clash Farm is a possibility. This place is also a possibility. And this is what we've come here for today. The Logan Fish Pond. I think if you're coming in your car, this road is absolutely fine. Although it's quite a small parking area, so I think for motorhomes it's better to park up where we have and then just do this little walk. It's only a five minute one. And on a day like this, why not? Look at this lovely sandy bean. Actually, the parking here is pretty good. Certainly a uh, space for motorhomes. It's just the road that was a bit potholy. So not very conducive for motorhomes. Although if you've got walking issues, then it's worth doing the little drive down here. Look, plenty of spaces. 100 year old fish larder. Oh, should be interesting. Oh, here we go, this is it. Thank you. So four pounds per person to get in. A quick bit of history for you. This dates back to uh, 1788 when the owner of the property decided to create a fish larder and it's now a sea life center so all the fish that are in there will eventually go out to sea and uh, be replaced by new ones that he's got growing in the tanks in there so it's actually a conservation area which is really wonderful to know In this little place, we are allowed to go down here. A ladies' bathing hut. And there's still a bylaw that says if ladies want to bathe, then two male security guards have to go to the end over there so that it's secure for the ladies to swim. And the guy was telling me that the waters around here have actually warmed up by six degrees. So some of the fish 
and sea life that they're seeing down here is um, completely new. So back in the 1788 years, days, oh, this is the swimming pool. Amazing piece of Scottish history. I love places like this. There's always so much more when you ask questions about what the history is behind these places. Our final port of call was Ballantrae, where we found a little air to spend the night before our ferry from Ken Ryan. £10.20 allowed us to stay here overnight to a magnificent sunset. And this small little fishing village was quite quaint and worthy of a little look round. So that brings us to the end of our little tour of this beautiful corner of Scotland and our five little highlights, little gems that we hope you too will enjoy searching out for yourselves. Thanks so much for watching.